The Premier's Walk in My Shoes campaign has been met with a healthy sprinkle of cynicism, but suggestions have also been flooding in as to what jobs and experiences her MPs should try. Anna Bly says she particularly wants to spend time with a low-paid worker. Someone who deals with people in that circumstance every day is Adrian Pazarski. As the Executive Officer of Queensland Shelter, he says the single biggest challenge for low-income families is housing. Adrian Pasarski, what do you think about this idea, getting politicians to spend some time with everyday workers? I think it's a good idea. I'm not sure it's quite long enough for them to properly get an appreciation of what it's like for workers on a, on a daily or weekly basis. And I do think that uh, too many politicians these days are just doing the fast track through their degree and ministerial office and, and then into uh, a seat somewhere along the line. Um, and they don't necessarily have the life experience that many of our current crop of politicians do have. The Premier says she particularly wants to learn from a low-income family. What will she learn in terms of the challenges that they face? She'll find out that housing is the single largest cost that low-income families have and that is their major commitment and that for far too many of them they just don't have enough money after meeting that housing cost and that's whether it's a mortgage or increasingly uh, in the rental market it's getting very very difficult. What are people saying to you about the cost of living? Things like uh, electricity and water prices and even car registration, all those things have gone up. They have and I think this is a trend that we're increasingly going to see with um, you know, global warming, um, energy costs are going to go up, water costs are going to go up, and they will disproportionately hit low-income families. So it's really important that we start thinking about how we mitigate those costs for low-income families. We've been hearing a lot of stories about um, individuals, women with children, families who are really struggling to pay their car registration but really want to maintain their car registration because they're in fear of losing their home and if they lose their car then they'll have absolutely nowhere to sleep. And the problem that is increasingly being faced is that if they lose their registration on their car they will still drive their car and then they really come at risk of being caught and becoming criminalised um, simply because they can't pay what are reasonable bills. That's a pretty desperate situation. Is there anything governments can do about that in particular? Well, we, we think that the, the most reasonable way is to explore a loan product somehow so that they could you know, defer a loan and make sure that their registration is paid. Apart from people in work, are there people in other circumstances that you think politicians should spend some time with? Well, one that I've been thinking about is um, politicians have now been imposing either compulsory or voluntary income management, particularly on Aboriginal um, individuals and families and communities. And I don't think it would be a bad experience um, to get a politician to have their own income managed for a while. Um, I'm not sure how many of our uh, current parliamentarians would uh, enjoy being told that they can't buy that bottle of wine or they can't have that beer or um, perhaps they just resort to the parliamentary dining room, I'm not sure. But, um, you know, I think it's, a, it's an experience that politicians are able to impose on others without experiencing themselves. What about the unemployed? Anna Bly says she's all about jobs. Should she also find out what it's like to be jobless? I think it's really valid that politicians again understand the real lived experience of people who are unemployed or single parents or people with a disability um, trying to negotiate across different government services um, can be a real maze and a really difficult thing to negotiate for people and I'm not sure our politicians properly understand the sorts of systems they impose on people when they make legislation and programs and decisions. So what's the measure of success with an initiative like this? What sort of outcomes would you be hoping for? I'd hope to see politicians have their eyes opened about the real lived experience of working people, of people who are unemployed, of people in wheelchairs, single parents, so on and so forth. Uh, many people on low incomes do it really tough and have to make very difficult choices and manage incredibly tight budgets. Um, it may even teach them 
a thing or two about um, the state budget and the national budget. Adrian Posarski, thank you. Thanks, Jessica.